Hi, I'm Venus O'Hara and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to talk about something a little bit different from my normal videos. I'm going to be talking about vegan fashion. Dun, dun, dun. And especially vegan leather, the problem with vegan leather. If you follow me, especially on Instagram, you'll know that I'm vegan, but I also feel a little bit kind of scared about approaching this subject because I don't usually speak about it and I'm aware that my following is not vegan and I want you to know that I'm not preaching. I'm just kind of sharing some of my my own philosophy with you today and uh, knowledge and experience, etc. So someone asked me if I was oops, someone asked me if I was also vegan with um, cosmetics and fashion, etc. And I have to say I'm I, I am as vegan as I as, as possible, really. Um, um, I've talked about why I was I'm vegan several times in the past, but mainly for me, I haven't eaten meat now for 25 years, and it was it wasn't a conscious decision about ethics or animal rights or anything. I just was a fussy eater as a child, and I didn't like meat at all. So when I became a teenager, etc., I just took a conscious decision to actually become vegetarian because that meant that I had special treatment when I ate at someone's house. <laughs> so it was always easy to get kind of asked for what I wanted because I would, I would always refuse food and uh, and now I just love food so much which is quite interesting. So I just um, instinctively didn't like the, uh, didn't like meat. I did love dairy though and um, I became vegan about um, three years ago and when I became vegan I became a m more um, attached to the ethical reasons behind it even though it wasn't the first reason why. Um, so yes I'm trying to become as, as vegan as I can not just with my food but also it's been a real process to veganize the rest of my life. For example I veganized my bed which meant I got rid of all my feather pillows, feather duvets, and now I have an, an incredible, incredible bed, which is, yeah, cruelty-free. Cosmetics, all my cosmetics are vegan. And also with fashion, it's a little bit tricky because, um, well, shoes is very tricky because I have wide feet with a high instep, and, and I found it, I have bought some vegan shoes in the past, but I found that I haven't found the one for my foot yet. And I definitely don't wear leather coats or leather bags anymore. Um, cause I, can't, I mean, I just think, I don't know, it's a bit difficult to explain, but should an animal die just for a leather bag? I just don't see how that could be justified in any way. I can understand if I can't find a vegan shoe, maybe I'll get a leather one, which is not the ideal situation by any means, but we do, we do need shoes. We need to kind of be able to walk comfortably. And also veganism is about having causing the less harm possible. It's not about being perfect, because we're not perfect. And also I was recently in hospital and um, I'm pretty sure that all the drugs I was given because I was had nine days on a drip with pneumonia. I'm pretty sure all of them were tested on animals. So, you know, you can't just, uh, it's very difficult to be 100% ethical vegan. It's very, very difficult. However, as far as bags are concerned and fashion, that's kind of a challenge as well, because a lot of vegan leather tends to be plastic. And after a while of um, lots of use, it can kind of um, flake away. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, but I've had um, vegan jackets in the, in the past, and then you find all this, kind of, let's say a black vegan coat, and then suddenly it's kind of peeling away and you get all these black p plastic pieces falling on the floor and all around you and you think, oh my God, this is so bad. And that's happened as well with um, vegan wallets and, um, and bags that I've had in the past. It's very difficult to get something that's high quality and um, yeah, I'm vegan because just because it's vegan doesn't mean it's great. Because I mean, sometimes it can be plastic as well, which is not so good for the environment. But anyway, I have in my possession a new bag that I've not actually opened yet. And it's from a company called L'Autre Sac, the other bag. And this is a really exciting thing to show you. Um, oops, L'Autre Sac. Well, it's not this, obviously this is just the, the cover. And this is a bag that's um, vegan leather, but it's made from car windows. Isn't that incredible? Wow. It's called, oops, it's called the Rosa bag. I haven't actually opened it yet. And there are three ways to wear it. Here you can see there is a hook here and two here. So you can have some straps to make a backpack or a cross body bag. Oh my God, it's so exciting. Mm. 
and inside it's very soft and you can fit lots of things in here oh yeah oh my god i'm loving it can't believe i haven't opened it earlier let's get all that stuffing out mm. Mm, so here we can fit lots of things inside and mm, let's see what it says here this bag used to be a car yes really our bags are made from recycled car glass they are 100 percent cruelty free net zero methane emissions and each bag saves 9.7 gallons of water compared to a traditional leather bag handmade in spain how cool oh my god and there's a little card in here as well. Venus. <laughs> Exciting. Wow. Thanks so much for your support. We hope you enjoy your rosa back. How cool. I definitely will. And I'm going to be uh, using it this afternoon. I think this bag is actually good for shopping, going out to meet friends, and it fits like, quite a lot of things inside. And you can even fit a laptop. The Rosa bag from L'Autre Sac is a three-in-one bag that's made from recycled car glass. You can wear it as a shoulder bag, a cross-body bag, or a backpack. It's scratch-proof and stretch-proof. It's more resistant than leather, and it's lighter than leather. Also, it's water and stain-proof. You can fit lots of things inside, and it won't look bulky. There are different compartments, so you can organize all your things. Every Rosa bag is made from one pound of recycled car glass from landfills, helping reuse an important source of waste that otherwise contaminates the planet. Compared to one traditional leather bag, we save 9.7 gallons of water and generate zero methane gas emissions. The Rosa bag is handmade in Spain and it's named after Rosa Parks, an American activist in the civil rights movement. It's named after her because it's elegant, revolutionary, and tough. Just like her. For more information about the Rosa bag and how to support it, check out the link in the description below. Thanks for watching!